Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And before I start this video, I just want to say that there won't, and this is basically, I know this video will come up on Wednesday, but just for those who are watching, there won't be a My Two Cent or any video review uh, for uh, that week and everything like that, mostly due to the fact that I'm going to be with family and all. We're going to be, I'm going to be going on, you know, a bit of a vacation. So there won't be a My Two Cent video for that that week or I think it, I think it will be on let's see I think let me get the calendar out my bad I, I it won't be a vi there won't be a my two cent video for the 28th to August July 28th to August 3rd August 3rd mostly like as I said I'll be um I'll be with family and everything like that and it's sort of sort of a vacation to a certain degree we've kind of planned this and everything like that so just in case anyone knows about anyone asks why there isn't a my two cent video or any video review or anything like that that's sort of the thing and you know every once in a while you do need to take a break um here and there and all but anyway moving on to this video um this is going to be a double review video for this one i'm going to give my review and thoughts on Deadpool and Wolverine that I just recently came back from the theaters watching. Not to mention this awesome Deadpool slash Star Wars shirt that I decided to wear when I go see it. Plus, I want to give my thoughts on the first season of Disney's Plus um, X-Men um, 97. Um, and for parents out there, it's worth pointing out that Deadpool Wolverine is rated R here in the on the U here in the U.S. So while X-Men's um, 97 on Disney Plus is rated TV. Um, PG here in the U in the U.S. Um, as well. Now, Deadpool's um, history to the movies and everything like that has been sort of had some ups and downs and everything like that. He first appeared with X-Men Origins um, Wolverine, and while that one got that movie kind of got a bit of a mixed response, and there were some folks who weren't happy with how Deadpool was portrayed um, in that move in that movie um, in regards to everything like that. This would lead to the 2016 release of basically um, Deadpool and everything like that, which would instead take it into the R-rated category, though, something that you don't hardly see a lot of comic books, movies, or anything um, like that. And that movie did um, very well at the box office and, and so forth, from the writing to the story to even Ryan Reynolds really delivering that character that I think a lot of a lot of Deadpool fans um really enjoy. It also opened the door to basically more um R-rated shows and movies um to be exact or to do better and everything like that. Like Logan is a good example of that um as well. This will follow up with basically um I think it was 2019. I'm sorry if I got the wrong date or anything like with Deadpool 2 which while that movie wasn't bad and still is enjoyable, it just didn't have the same Mm, the way basically um dead the first deadpool did i just it, i just wasn't really feeling it as much as say um the original one so when it was announced that they were doing deadpool 3 but this time was called titled deadpool and wolverine i was very curious to see how this was going to work not to mention the fact that they brought back hugh jackman to play the iconic character wolverine that most remember him when they when x-men originally came out back in 2000 and all and after um, seeing this movie, I honestly have to say that I came away pleased with this one. This was, I think, this one I think was as good as the first Deadpool movie and everything like that. And I think for those who were worried about how Deadpool was going to be handled into the MCU, especially with Marvel Studios and everything like that, you can be happy to know that I think they handled it um, very well and everything. So I'm going to break this Deadpool and Wolverine down into what I like and what I didn't like mixed or not 100% sure about. In terms of what I like, I will say that the humor and everything about it is still there. There's still plenty of fourth wall breaking um, stuff that Deadpool is well known for and you will definitely see it ranging from making fun of ranging from like Kevin Feige to the MCU in general and everything like that with Deadpool calling himself a Marvel God and all so that was certain like to even see you know the ruined 20th Century Fox logo and also it was definitely very clever and a lot of that jokes are still there and everything like that and there were times I was laughing seeing some of these jokes so I thought that was really great that the fourth wall breaking is still there it's done very well um in this movie and i'm sure deadpool fans will definitely um appreciate that and all 
Um, the next thing I do want to talk about is the story, and I will say the story is definitely um, an improvement over um, Deadpool 2 and everything like that. I like how the idea they have the TSA from the Loki series play, play a role in basically um, Deadpool, um, and Deadpool and Wolverine, not to mention, you know, seeing, you know, the different versions of Wolverine throughout um, the movie, including one, especially the what's considered the worst Wolverine, um, to be exact, um, played by Hugh Jackman and all. What's also amazing is that we also got to see um, other characters, like we saw Chris Evan, who actually played, you know, um, Johnny Storm in the, you know, the original, you know, Fantastic um, Four movie, the 2005 and 2007 version of those movies, to even we got to see, you know, um, Jennifer Garner, you know, with Elektra, uh, Wesley Snipe and playing Blade to even Chad Tanning playing a Gambit that we didn't get to see who never made an appearance I think or at least not as an appearance in any of the X-Men movies outside of X-Men Wolverine Origins but still it was nice to see some of these um, guest appearance um, here and there. And and so basically the whole adding TSA and basically them, um, basically Deadpool trying to save his universe or, and everything like that was done really well. So I certainly think um, that was good. And, and so definitely I do think the story was definitely an improvement, in my opinion, over Deadpool 2 and all. And last but not least, I would say Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman were great in this film. I mean, it was great to see both of those two, like, interact with each other and even try to basically almost, like, try to kill each other, um, to be exact, though. You saw, like, how basically, um, basically see, um, like, Hugh Jackman really get pissed at Deadpool at times. And there were some pretty, um, funny moments, um, to be exact, to see him sort of interact with, um, Deadpool in a way. I thought that was, um, done really well. I think those two were kind of like the highlight of the film, despite the, with the title, you know, Deadpool and Wolverine. I thought they did that. I thought their interaction between these two were actually very good. So that was that. I thought they were great, um, in this film. As far as what I didn't like mixed or not 100% sure for Deadpool and Wolverine, I would say that while I definitely do enjoy the, enjoy the film and I thought it was funny, I do feel like there was a missed opportunity with this film to basically joke or make reference to stuff like X-Men Origins Wolverine to Avengers Endgame. Like, I would have loved to see, you know, um, Deadpool make a joke about how he was... Um, new master if you may remember from Avengers Endgame to basically maybe making a comment like I would have loved to hear Hugh Jackman make a comment about saying that if you know Deadpool doesn't shut up I'm going to shut that mouth of his up and then sort of insert a X-Men Origins Wolverine joke into it though so I feel like there was a missed opportunity to add that in considering this movie is known for since Deadpool is known for breaking you know the fourth wall and everything like that so I felt like that was a missed opportunity. But overall, I would say I came away from this movie uh, very pleased. I thought this was done uh, really well. I think Marvel did a very good job incorporating and how they handled Deadpool into the, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, it remains to be seen if we'll see um, d what future may hold for Deadpool in the MCU, let alone it remains to be seen if Hugh Jackman will come back and play as Wolverine uh, or anything like that. So there's still some unknown factors and we'll have to um, wait and see about that. But I do hope the success of this movie does open the door for Disney to take a bit more a risk in terms of maybe making some of their MCU projects, whether it's on Disney Plus or on in the movies, to basically, you know, maybe go into the R-rated category. I mean, I thought that was not a bad job of what they did with Marvel's Echo in terms of making it more towards, you know, TVMA and all. So I'm hoping this opens the door for Marvel Studios to explore more of it on the R-rated side and um, everything like that. But in either case, Deadpool Wolverine is definitely a recommendation. I would recommend for those who might have been disappointed with Deadpool 2, well, I think you'll come away with this one um, very pleased. It was good, and not to mention, it was also pretty funny um, as well. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to the second part of my double review. And this one, I want to give my thoughts on Disney's Plus X-Men 97 Season 1. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Back. 
Okay, we are back with part two of my um, double review. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at um, X-Men 97, the continuation of the 90s X-Men that lasted, I think, from like the early 90s to the late 90s and all. Um, for me, though, X-Men, I think, let's say the X-Men cartoon, along with the Spider-Man cartoon and all, were certainly part of my childhood and all. I remember watching the X-Men car cartoons, you know, on Saturday morning, you know, for sa all the Saturday morning cartoons, along with other shows like Batman the Animated Series and others. And it was definitely a show I would watch um, along with the Spider-Man one um, as well, though. And it was definitely a fun time to watch those shows. I even remember one time it was on, like, prime time, like at, um, like, like around 8, 8 p.m. and everything. Um, this was basically, I think it was kind of building up to what would be known as the Phoenix Saga for the um, X-Men cartoon and everything like that. I mean, obviously, as I enter high school, I kind of um, pretty much stop watching it, although I'm pretty sure you can now on Disney Plus watch for those who may have missed it and everything like that. So it was kind of my surprise to hear that Marvel Studio was basically going to bring back um, basically the X-Men cartoons under the title of X-Men 97, a continuation from, like I mentioned, the 90s um, X-Men. And after watching um, all 10 episodes, I would say that the style and everything about it that made the original X-Men cartoons a classic are still there, e even with, especially with like um, one little thing about it that I'm not a hundred percent um sure about now with the x-men 97 we're going to break it down into what i like and what i didn't like mix um not a hundred percent sure about um so in terms of what i like i will say um the story for x-men 97 um still holds up to still holds up very rare very well much similar to the original 90s x-men it's still the story of you know humans and mutants and their place um in this world and everything like that there are those who still fear mutants or hate mutants and everything like that <clears throat> excuse me and basically you see the x-men after um charles xavier passed away in the series from Nani of x-men um trying to continue his legacy and all or at least make an attempt to try to continue um his legacy so it certainly is nice to see that story hold up to even seeing um magneto take control of the x-men for a um brief period and everything like that considering i think magneto is one of my favorite um mutants and all in the x-men universe and all so i definitely think that the story still um holds up um very well and, and next thing i do want to talk about is um episode four of the um, x-men series and this is one that i think is um my personal favorite i because this one had to do with um g uh, not g um jubilee basically you know turning becoming 18 becoming an adult um wanted to go out but none of the x-men wanted to go out and everything like that and basically she plays with basically another mutant who becomes a love interest um the system called malintendo and basically a take on a sega and nintendo or like a super nintendo and everything like that um and it's basically very interesting because then they get sucked into the system and take on a familiar um mutant or familiar alien from the um x-men from the x-men cartoons and all and what makes it interesting is that a lot of the scenes in it play off like from the classic um x-men arcade game that you may remember from konami and everything like that you know the or the classic beat-em-ups and everything i really thought that was very clever how they did that um episode and all and i definitely to me it definitely is one of my favorite episodes in um x-men 97 i like that little bit of that old school gaming nostalgic that they put into that that was, i thought that was um very clever um did that they did that and last but not least, though, uh, the other thing I do like is it's nice that we saw some guest appearance of other mutants or other Marvel characters, though. Um, some of them we saw were basically, you know, like Captain America to even basically a brief appearance of Daredevil for that made an appearance on I remember seeing on the old 90s Spider-Man cartoon to you know Captain Marvel to Iron Man uh, not Captain Marvel, I mean Doctor Strange and you know Iron Man to even Spider-Man making a bit more of a beer brief appearance um with and without his costume and everything like that so it's nice to see some of these other Marvel characters um make a guest appearance um in X-Men 97.
As far as what I didn't like or mixed or not 100% sure about, I will say I am somewhat mixed on the animation and everything like that. I mean, it's not terrible. It's still, you know, classic 2D animation and everything like that. It's just, to me, it just doesn't look maybe as impressive as the animation from the early 90s um, X-Men um, to a certain extent. I get it, they kind of sort of cleaned it up a little bit um, here and there, but just a little mix on the way the um, animation is done with um, X-Men 97. But putting that aside, overall I would say I definitely enjoyed um, X-Men 97. It's definitely um, worth watching, especially for those who grew up watching the 90s X-Men. And I'm very curious to see how um, season two holds up. And I hope this opens the door to maybe, you know, maybe that 90s Spider-Man making, um, getting his own show and everything like that. If this, if they could do this with X-Men and do that very well, I would love to see Spider-Man um, Get another shot and everything like that especially how i think the final episode um ended and everything and it would be very interesting to see them see him like interact with the x-men again like he did in one of the episodes of you know spider-man cartoons and also i hopefully this opens the door to see other um animated you know like something like that though we've had some animated shows from marvel and everything like that on disney plus but i think the x-men 97 i think is in my opinion um my personal favorite and everything like that, especially with that um, nostalgic um, feel to it and all. <clears throat> okay, um, this concludes my double review on both Deadpool and Wolverine and Disney's Plus um, X-Men 97. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about um, Deadpool and Wolverine? Do you think this is the best um, Deadpool movie um, so far, though? Did you thought the movie was funny? Did you laugh? Did you enjoy the movie in um, any way at all? Um, what, did you think this was? Do you think this was an improvement over Deadpool 2? And what are your thoughts about X Men '97? Do you think it still maintains that? quality that the original early 90s x-men cartoon had and all do you like some of the guest appearance from other characters are you hoping to see what season how season two will um play out do you agree with what i say in this video do you disagree do you have a difference of opinion um as always sound off in the comment section below let me know what you think and if you do like this video i hope you hit the like button i would appreciate it and i hope you do subscribe to my youtube channel if you do make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos that put up also, feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel if you'd like. You can do it through PayPal Me or Patreon or Steam Labs. Links will be in the description of this video, so if you're watching this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that'll be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye!